What's up, YouTube? This is Wendell, aka Bit Native, with another work from home tech video. Right now, I'm sitting in the brand new office. We're building out the studio, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about. It's kind of been a little while since the last video, but we're going to showcase some of the things that have actually been going on behind the scenes. The product that I'm going to talk about right now is the Yugo web server that we've utilized from work from home tech website. It is up, it is live, it is bilingual, which it includes support for Spanish speakers. Now, I still have work to do on the video content itself to include bilingual support there, but that is a work in progress, and that's what we do here on Work From Home Tech. We get the work done. So without further ado, let's get it. So I want to go ahead and get this video started pretty quickly because this is one of the simplest web server installations that you'll find around. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off by going to go yugo.io and this is the website for Yugo, Yugo where you can download Yugo. Uh, there's a quick start here. There's also the documentation. And most importantly, one of the things you'll definitely want to take a look at is the themes uh, so you can actually theme your website. So what we want to do first, though, is we're going to, want to go to this quick start. And I want to go ahead and click over here to install Yugo. And if you go to the releases of Yugo, one of the things I want you to make a note of, which is very important, especially if you're going to run themes. Now there's the default installs for all the different operating systems. You have the ARM install, you have 64-bit installs, you have 32-bit installs. Uh, this is something that is accomplished very easily since this is a Golang project. You can cross-compile to any platform. The cross-compilation is built in natively, natively to Golang. Uh, but what I want to do is focus on the Yugo extended version because that's what you're going to need if you're taking a look at some of the extensive themes that have a lot of additional functionality. So do yourself a favor. Go ahead and grab this extended version from the jump so you're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this version and I'm going to click here and I have downloaded that. Now over here in Visual Studio, what I'll do is I will go ahead and move that uh, Yugo version that we just downloaded. And if I tell it where I want it to go, it'll actually work. So now you see up here, we have this file here. And what I'll do from here is I'll go ahead and open up Explorer right here and what I can do is just go ahead and click here and we'll just say extract all and that's going to extract it just simply into this current folder I have here which is under my documents folder uh, so now we can see that I have a folder 64 bit and then there's the U the Yugo exe and then there's a license file and a readme file uh, so if I do an ls you go 64 bit, you'll see the three files. Now this executable, I'll go ahead, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, I will move that you go executable up here to the top level. So now you can see I have the folder, the zip file, and you go exe. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to remove the you go folder. We don't need that anymore. I'll remove the Yugo zip file. We don't need that anymore. So all I've got is this executable file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now set my execution path to whatever the current value of the execution path is. And I'm gonna add this directory, the current working directory, to the path. 
Actually, that was the Windows way to do it. <laughs> Export path equals path resin worker directory. This should work. So now I should be able to execute the Yugo command. And you can see now it's unable to find a config file, so it's bailing out. So now we know that Yugo is in our path, and that's what we want. So what we want to do is, now that we have Yugo, what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and say Yugo. We'll say new site, work from home tech. And as you can see here, now we've created a work from home tech folder. I can take a look and see. I've got work from home tech. So we'll want to go, we're going to go into that folder. And you can see what inside of that folder, we've got arch types, content, data, layout, public, static themes. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to do a git init. And that establishes the git repo for the site. And then we can go ahead and take a look at themes. We'll go back to our website. Close that. And we'll go to our website. And we'll go back to the Yugo themes. And what I want to do is just quickly download a simple thing that I know is going to work and I think it's uh, ZO yeah there it is right here we're gonna go ahead and go to this one now this is one of the more robust themes one of the important things to understand about Yugo is it automatically out of the box it supports m uh, multiple languages uh, it also supports simple automated updates from GitLab deployments. So if you put your website readme files into a GitLab repository and set up the pipeline user for deployment, you can actually have your web server do a pull from the GitLab repo and then the content will automatically be updated by Yugo itself. Uh, that's one of the things I've done for my website. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. But what I want to do here is I want to click on download. And if you go to the downloads for this, uh, actually, let's go back to the theme. And there's a easier way to do this. I think if we go down and go down to the documentation, uh, we'll go to getting started and installation. This gives me kind of a, a walkthrough of step-by-steps on how to do it because what I want to do is I want to actually set up this as a sub-module underneath the Git project that I created. So what I'll do is I will go back here and I will paste that. And what we're going to do is we're going to Git as a sub-module and add that to the Git we just created with this Git init command and it's going to put it inside of the themes folder under ZZO. So if we take a look at the site we created, you see there's a theme folder and there's essentially nothing in it. But once we do this command, we should see the git command pull the information as a submodule. And now you can see it is putting it right here inside of our theme. So now we have the ZZO theme, and we can go to theme. Um, and we can list, you can see there's ZZO. So we wanna go into ZZO. And what we wanna do is, there's an example website uh, down here. Uh, and you can see there's the config file, there's a content file, there's a resources, and there's a static information. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to config, oops, go to ZZO. Actually, I'm inside there. I want to go to example. 
and CD example site. And what I want to do is copy everything from here up to, to our root folder. So I'm in example site. I want to copy it to one directory up, ZO, another directory up, themes, uh, another directory up into our root of our site so that these four folders will be in the root work from home tech folder. So I'm going to do that. So now let's go ahead and go back. Now we should have that config, that content, the static. Um, now, one of the things you can do for configuring Yugo is you can have just kind of a root config file if you have very simple setup and configuration. Um, maybe you don't want the multiple language support and you want simple pages. Uh, or you can create something elaborate and actually include an entire configuration folder where you have configurations that are specific to different languages. Uh, there's default configurations. So I can't necessarily have two configurations. Yugo is smart enough to understand if you have a config file, uh, which is a Tomo format, it'll use that. Or if you have a config folder, it will use that and it knows the difference and it can figure it out. So what I'll do is I'll remove this config Tomo file. And I basically have the example site ready to go right here in my Yugo folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do Yugo server. And then this should fire up Yugo. It's gonna read the information in the example files, which is basically markdown language files, uh, something that is found everywhere in the GitLab environments where readme files are created with markdown languages. You'll even find it in big primetime tools such as Atlassian that support markdown where you can pull in markdown content. So you can see here it is running and it's on a local host 1313. So if you actually go over here to the website, I can open up localhost. Thirteen, thirteen, and you can see there's the example site right there up and running. So if, if we want to go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code, oops, open up Visual Studio Code, uh, we can go ahead and we can go into our content, and I think we can essentially go to English and we go to the posts and I think we were looking at the syntax highlighting again the MD for the markdown language I'm going to go ahead and go back that's not the file I wanted uh, I wanted the syntax highlighting so here we go so you can see the syntax highlighting and this is pretty simple um, creating these files is as simple as using the Yugo command and telling it the file name uh, and the file location and it will create this essential boilerplate information where it has the title uh, and it'll give you this little section here between the three dashes. Uh, you can add to that to create something more robust but you can see that this is kind of a, a language itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Go ahead and do a split screen for you where I have the website on the right side and I've got Visual Studio Code on the left side. That way I can show the updating. When I go to syntax here, syntax highlighting, you can see this diff section right here. Uh, and then you can see the formatting for the code. Uh, right here, what I'm gonna say is it says more about tuning syntax highlighting is true. Um, we'll say if you are a Yugo guru and then we'll do that and then I will go ahead and hit control s to save it and now you can see my web page is just refreshed by itself 
more about syntax highlighting is true if you are a Yugo guru. So that's what I mean by dynamic updating of the website. Yugo handles it all, as a, all on its own. And you can see down here, it says change detected, rebuild the site. And the site has been rebuilt just by updating this read down, or, or sorry, this markdown file. Uh, the Visual Studio editor uh, available for free. You can get this just by downloading it and it handles re uh, markdown files. It'll even give you a preview of the markdown file as you're editing it if you're just learning markdown format. Uh, this is very, very powerful. Like I said, you can set it up so it pulls from the GitLab repo automatically with any updates you push there from anywhere on the continent, anywhere in the world. <laughs> um, the Yugo software is what I have done and it took me a while and kind of delayed some of the videos. Um, so now if you go to work from hometech.io, you will see, and I forgot the K, so let me put the K in here. So you will see now that I've got my website up, uh, I'm posting videos there, my social medias are up. Those are handled in that config, me, that config uh, file that we talked about. So inside that config for the main site, you establish all of your social media. Uh, so you can go to the different sites for the social media. The markdown file, each one of these is an actual post. So there's a file that goes through everything. Uh, this is important to note that I have begun to provide bilingual support. So you can actually go there and you can actually go to the Spanish or the English version. Um, let me go ahead and open this up completely. And you can go and download English or Spanish. So we can see that I have support for either version. And we'll go back to English so I know what the heck I'm doing. Um, I've got someone helping me out with the translations. They're doing a pretty good job with that. Uh, but that is essentially it. That is Yugo. A very powerful, very simple. You saw we installed it from a single executable file. Uh, of course, this isn't a you know click download run solution you will definitely have to put some time into learning and understanding all the different options involved with the themes you'll also have to set up something to restart that executable uh, whether you have an init d kind of configuration or a system d kind of configuration uh, just in case something happens the the web server shuts down or you reboot your machine um, you can put this out in a DigitalOcean droplet or uh, any other provider you have. Uh, so I think this is a very powerful tool for setting up a simple and autonomous uh, workflow for updating and using a website. So stay tuned for more videos. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the like button if you like this or provide feedback or comments if you don't. Stay tuned for more videos. Peace.